everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon EOS C300 Mark II video tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be talking about the C300 Mark II, but specifically using this camera with the DPV 2410 4K onset display. There's a lot of stuff that this monitor can do. I'm not going to be able to cover all of it in this video, but I do want to show you some of the key features of what we can do with this, especially when we harness the power of a camera like this. Now, let me just talk a little bit about 4K production for a minute. We are being asked to shoot stuff in ultra high definition, which is four times the resolution of HD. We're being asked to shoot things in DCI 4K, 4096 by 2160. And it is becoming more and more common that we have to do this in production. Well, we can do it with cameras like the C300 Mark II, but we also need tools like this display to allow us to do that effectively both on set and in post-production. So now what we should do is get this camera set up for what I think is probably the best workflow when you're working with the C300 Mark II, and that's actually a raw output directly from the camera. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the menu and in my menu for recording media setup, I have a rec out 4K raw mode. We wanna make sure that that's set to 4K raw if we wanna monitor a 4K image. So we can actually push a 2K image to this display if we want, and it has great scaling capabilities. So you can feed an HD or 2K image to this monitor, and it will work in that environment but if we are in fact working with a 4K camera system like the C300 Mark II, let's go ahead and push 4K to the monitor. And again, when we talk about working with cameras, one of the things that's so important now when we're dealing with such high resolutions is getting critical focus. So if we can see a one-to-one -one representation of our pixels coming from our camera to our monitor, that's huge. And when I'm feeding it a 4K signal, and by the way, this 4K signal is raw, and it's being fed to the monitor with a single 3G SDI cable. That's going right into the back of the monitor. So I'm gonna go into menu, and under the channel settings menu, I'm gonna go over to input configuration. And this is very important to remember. We wanna make sure that if we wanna monitor that raw image, that we have this set to 3G SDI raw. So now we know that we have that match between what we have set on the camera and also what we're seeing here on the screen. So that's just something to remember when you're setting it up. Otherwise, if you had it on the 3G SDI, you would actually be seeing a 2K representation of the 4K image that was being sent out. That's not what we want. So now we're in the adjustment menu and this is where a lot of the stuff is gonna happen when you're using the display. And the first thing that I wanna do inside of this menu is I wanna make sure that I'm mapping what I'm getting from the camera correctly in terms of color gamut. So I'm gonna go over here and under the color gamut options, you will see that there are a lot of choices. And right now I am set to cinema gamut to 2020. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the cinema gamut color space that's coming off of the C300 Mark II and I am actually displaying it here in the BT or Rec 2020 color space, which is really what we're gonna be working with on a lot of productions. Now, if for some reason you were shooting DCI 4K and you knew that your entire workflow was a digital cinema projection workflow and you were being asked to do it, we could look at that transform in a cinema gamut to DCI, but for our purposes, we're gonna go ahead and leave that for now to cinema gamut to 2020 and select it. The next thing I wanna do is talk about how we can actually take advantage of and see into what the dynamic range is or the high dynamic range of the C300 Mark II. So I'm gonna go into first gamma and I'm gonna switch this from Canon Log 2 to Canon Log 2 HDR. And then the next thing that I need to do is I actually need to do really a contrast boost so that I can increase the brightness so we can actually see that high dynamic range. So I'm gonna go down here to my detail settings and inside of that menu, we will see boost contrast. And if I turn that on, now we're actually gonna to start to see the image as it should be on the display. 
And this is really key to the future of being able to see high dynamic range coming from these camera systems. And just so that you're not confused, high dynamic range in terms of what we're talking about has to do with this high capture of many stops of luminance values from a digital cinema camera. Not to be confused with HDR when we talk about shooting with stills cameras where you're taking multiple exposures and then working with them in post. They're two different things, we're using the same term, but we're talking about HDR for digital cinema cameras. So now we can see that contrast boost, and while the image looks a little bit darker than you might be used to, the reality is that what we're seeing is into all of those stops, and that is going to allow us to work effectively with the image in production on set. And the other thing I wanna mention here, which is happening all in the background, is that this feed from this single 3G SDI from the C300 Mark II, this raw output, it is being debayered by a CPU in the 2410 in real time, which is awesome, because we really are seeing a true video image from a raw feed, and that is also very, very important. Now, let's talk about a completely different workflow. Let's talk about recording 4K to the C300 Mark II, but working in an ACES proxy workflow. So there's a couple of things that we have to do on the 2410 and on the C300 Mark II to do that effectively. But let's talk about ACES, the Academy Color Encoding System, just briefly. And this is becoming a standard for workflows in digital cinema production, both for television and for feature films. And what's interesting about ACES is that to me, it's the great equalizer. We take lots of camera systems that are out there with different sensors, high dynamic range, you know, different color spaces, and we can bring them into production and post-production environments and bring them together. And so one of the nice things about ACES, if your camera supports it, the C300 Mark II does, is that we can actually set up a workflow on set so that a DIT can come in and we can really start to figure out what's gonna happen with that image on set before we get into the post-production phase of a project. But the first thing we'll do is we'll go into, right now, the C300 Mark II. We're gonna go down to our Assistant Functions menu and we are gonna change the LUT to on. So we're gonna activate that. So we're gonna set our monitor out on the camera to actually have the ACES Proxy 10 LUT applied to it. So that's the first step on here. And by the way, in this kind of workflow, what we'll be talking about is a workflow where on set the DIT can work with the image that's coming out of the camera as a 2K image. And right now we have our rec out going to an external recorder. We could actually be recording raw 4K to that at the same time if we wanted to. Now, I'm just gonna go over to the 2410. And on the 2410, we just wanna do a couple of things. We wanna make sure that our input configuration is set to 3G HD SDI, because we are taking in a 2K signal from the C300 Mark II. And then inside of the adjust menu, we wanna make sure that our color gamut is set to ACES proxy. So we have a match between these two. And now in productions that have adopted ACES as their workflow, they can go easily from onset to post-production. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some other features in this monitor. Scroll down here to the function settings, and this is where we get to a lot of the stuff that we normally like to have in a display. Right now we have F3 set to our scopes, and we can toggle through waveform monitor, vector scope, and then off. F4, this is set to false color. And then we have F5, and that has been assigned to our peaking one, peaking two, and then we can set that to off. So again, very easy to use this monitor in production, very fast to use the monitor in production. Now I wanna bring in one special tool that we can use with this monitor and talk about an ASC CDL workflow. We all love toys. And we especially love toys when we can use them effectively on set. And this combination here of the 2410 and the Tangent Element TK is a really, really cool combination. 
All we're doing is taking this tangent board, plugging it directly into the USB port of the 2410. And whether we're working in an ACES workflow or ASC CDL workflow, we can use these wheels. Let me just show you what happens. I'll just touch this wheel right here over on the left and immediately it recognizes the control surface. So let's just do a quick translation here if you're used to doing some basic color correction in post. Let's just bring that back up again. So we have here power, offset, and slope. So this is really our mids here, power. This is really working with our shadows and then this is really our highlights and when we're turning this wheel, we're really changing the luminance values of each of those. And again, it's this adjustment. I mean, you can push those highlights if you want to. You can bring them down, but this is really where we start to figure out and kind of get the image that we want. And once we have something that is something that's a, either a starting point or as a reference for post-production, then we can actually take that image and we can save it to a USB drive. So what we do is we just unplug the tangent controller, and then I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a USB drive, and we're gonna go into the menu. And this is all happening in the adjustment menu. We go over, and this is in the CDL option. And then once we're inside of here, we can actually see the changes that were made, okay? And there are many presets that we can actually save in here. This is actually being saved to CDL1. And then we can take that color decision list and go down to detail settings. When we go into detail settings, we have an option here, which is CDL export. You can also see that we can import CDLs into the monitor, which is very cool. So we go CDL export, and then we go in and we say execute. If I want to export that, and now it's going to take that information and put it onto the USB drive. So then we can take this file, bring it to a color grading suite, and in fact what's great about the 2410 is you can use it both on set and in post-production, and then if I take this information, apply it to my original image in post, it will look exactly the same as it did on set. So that's a really, really great workflow and really shows you a lot of the power of using the 2410 in both a production and post-production environment.